Hello everybody, welcome back to another session by K21 Academy and today our expert trainer will be discussing about some important data engineering concepts in Azure. So make sure you're watching the video till the end. What are the important data engineering concepts which everyone must know? Two types of data are there, operational which is transactional, right? You have transactional data and you also have the analytical data. And now the transactional data is something which you use in OLTP transactions, right? transactions essentially. So what are they? What are transactions? DML operations, set of logical DML operations, data manipulation languages, you yeah, insert some dates and deletes. That's what we mean, right? Your operational transactional data that is used by applications. OLTP, that's what we mean, transactions. Right? Analytical, on the other hand, which is the crucial concern for us, analytical is something where the data is highly denormalized. And then you essentially do analysis and reporting using online analytical processing. You create data warehouses and then you fire reporting queries with aggregations on top of those data. Data is historical because we are asking analytical questions year on year, volume, year on year, Profit growth. So now you need to look at historical data in a time dimension. Year on year profit growth for tier 1, tier 2, tier 3 cities in India. So then you are now drilling down in the tier dimension, city dimension. Right? Likewise, so it is analytical domain in which we are asking in technical words, all possible aggregates. Right. So all possible aggregates historically, whatever can be reported, measures and KPIs, Right and perspectives, those things are what we are looking at. Streaming data is an incremental data set, a data set that builds itself incrementally. It's not a batch. It starts and it incrementally builds itself as newer and newer data arise from the source. So it is perpetually generated. Theoretically speaking, a stream has no end. Theoretically, stream, theoretically speaking, a stream has no end. And we are all living in a stream of time. Right. We are all living in a stream of time. That's a separate story that we end one day, that's we die one day. But time is coming as a stream each and every second. It's incrementally building itself. And it is incrementally building itself in only a single direction. That's because of the second law of thermodynamics. We can't go into opposite direction in time. The arrow of time as these physicists say. That's because of laws of nature. So a similar way, a data set that builds itself incrementally is what we call as a real-time streaming data set. It is generated from a source like a sensor or a embedded system or maybe IoT or legacy OT or any kind of a system, right? Microcontrollers, systems on chips. It can come from anywhere. And uh, what we need is to ingest it and then process it. Streaming data. Streaming data is very different from batch. Streaming data is unbounded. It starts somewhere, but it does not end theoretically. Right? What is a data pipeline? A pipeline is a very generic term. Right? Pipeline is not something which is very a specialization of data engineering. Pipeline is something which is very generic. A pipeline is something which is repeatable, reliable, effective, efficient, automatic, consistent way of doing something. So if you say I have a pipeline, what we mean to understand is that various phases of actions, various phases of tasks are being automated reliably, efficiently, effectively, consistently to produce the same result. If we feed in the potatoes, we're going to get fries out of your pipeline. That's what it means always, right? So that's reliable, effective, efficient pipeline. And data pipelines generally mean four things for us data engineers, either a copy pipeline, which is to move the data from one location to another, one source to another sink. That's a movement, copy pipeline. Another is to not only move it, but also transform it while it is moving. That's called the mapping data flow, right? Mapping data flow is a type of an activity in orchestration and pipelining in which the data is transformed as it is moved from the source to the sink. 
as it flows from the source to the sink, it is transformed, mapping data flows. Another type of activities are also there, which are called as wrangling activity, which is typically done by a data analyst, power query activity. Synapse analytics does not support that power query activity at the current moment. They may bring it in the future, but at the current moment, power query activity, your mashup engine activity, M query activity, wrangling activity, it is sometimes called as. That only your data factory supports, Azure Data Factory. Data Factory supports the wrangling activity. Similarly, it also supports change data capture, CDC configurations. And fourth type of an activity is a dispatch orchestration. That is to call some external service to do something on the behalf of the pipeline. For example, a pipeline could call a Databricks cluster. Your pipeline could say to the Databricks cluster that please execute this notebook on your cluster and give me the output. Remote orchestration, remote dispatch. A calling an external service, that's what we mean by this. So, pipelining is essentially an automation to implement an ETL or an ELT workload. Extract the raw data from some data source, transform it using transformation layer, and then load it in some data storage to serve it or extract it from the raw source, load it into the serving layer, and the serving layer itself will have the capability to transform it because it will have clusters in it, like Spark cluster, SQL cluster, like Synapse Analytics. Synapse Analytics supports both kinds of operations, ETL and ELT operations. You could also write ETL and ELT jobs using your data frame API and so on and so forth. So it need not be always codeless. It can also be codeful, which means you may be writing it in a code manner. Now, three things are very crucial. A lake, a lake. And in, in, in the last session, I think we have discussed it in great detail. Why we call it as a lake? We call it as a lake because of a very simple fact that multiple streams of data are ingress and multiple streams of data are egress into it. From various sources, data is coming to a lake and various downstream applications are taking that data out of the lake. So lake acts as a repository of large volume of data, nicely organized, nicely protected. It's not a dump, it's a lake. And it is also a lake because of a very simple fact that it is not ready for as is consumption. It's not a serving layer. It's not a packaged drinking water bottle. Right? It's not in the form factor which is ready for serving. If you want to read, if, if you want to drink water, it's not good to drink it from a lake. It's better to drink it from a form factor like a packaged drinking water bottle. So lake does not support indexing. Lake does not support Statistics, Lake does not support adaptive approximate query processing. Lakes do not have a concept of result set caches, materialized views like bit query profiles, does not have any such sophisticated nature. It's very raw. It's very naive storage layer. It's a cheap scalable object storage layer. That's it. So it is not ready for serving. You should not directly hook up to the files on a lake using Power BI desktop tool. Open Power BI desktop, get data, say I want to get data from a lake, and you connect to the lake and then you say I want to report on these files. That's not a correct strategy, essentially. So it is an analytical data stored in files. And it's a distributed storage. It's an it's a HDFS, Hadoop compatible file system. It has a DFS endpoint, distributed file system endpoint. And it comes with a driver, which is called as AB. FSS driver, Azure Blob file system secure, or sometimes Azure Blob file system SSL. Very important service for us, right? Because the primary advantage of a lake is what? 
diversity, diversified data assets. You can ingest any sort of data asset in a data lake. That's why we need it for an enterprise. Digging a lake, as we call it, in the lingo of data engineering. You need to dig a lake. Okay. Every organization must have a lake. Now, lake is something which is not serving layer. Serving layer is a data warehouse. A clean, structured, relational warehouse. Because the business intelligence teams, they want RDBMS. They want clean SQL-based structured data warehouses in which they keep their dimensional models, the dims and the facts. In any kind of a schema, maybe star, snowflake, fact constellation, whatever, maybe the schematization, but they're going to keep the data in those schema in there. And why do they want it? Because on top of the dimensional model, which they create in a data warehouse, they can create on top of it a semantic model. Semantic model, right? Semantic model in which things like measures, key performance indicators, perspectives, cubes, these things are authored by these business intelligence developers. So they want you to have a data warehouse which is clean structured. Serving layer must be that. So that they can develop a semantic model on top of it. It is as simple equation as it goes. Now the entire data engineering revolves around this. As far as the BI project is concerned. As far as the business intelligence product is concerned. Project is concerned. How do you dig a lake? How do you ingest data into a lake? How do you organize the lake? How do you protect the lake? And then how do you transform the raw data lying in a lake to put it into the serving layer. That's it. That's called as modern data warehousing, MDW. MDW pattern, modern data warehousing architecture. And the tool that is the king of the jungle for processing and transforming the data is Spark Paradigm, Spark Framework. Apache Spark clusters, as we call it. You need Parallel distributed in memory, random access memory, RAM based, semiconductor memory based processing rather than disk based processing in order to process such large volumes of data. A unified platform, it can do machine learning, structured data processing, graphical processing, SQL data frames, whatever you want. It's a distributed data processing engine and we'll see some of its core capabilities like data frame processing structured streaming processing, MNLib API, right? some core capabilities of that product. So this is typically what you refer to as the modern data warehousing. You may have operational data sources like SQL, Cosmos DB, Microsoft Dataverse, and you also have sensors, signals, right? all these real-time streams, incremental data sets being streamed to you. And then you use streaming ingestion tools like event hubs, event grids, service bus, Kafka clusters in order to ingest your data. And then the processing engine that you typically use to process the streams are essentially stream analytics engine or structured streaming API of your Databricks can also be used. And then you typically put the output of your stream analytics job in a persistent storage, either a lake or a serving layer for reporting, which is a warehouse. So eventually the data coming from sensors goes to warehouse. Similarly, from operational sources, you ingest using data factory, synapse pipelines your data data ingestion, ETL even you can do. Obviously, you know mapping data flows. And then after you do that, you put it in the analytical data storage where you can do SQL-based processing, Spark-based processing, and data exploration using custo query language and put it in the warehouse in the dimensional model again. And then typically after your serving layer, that is your dimensional model is ready, then you hook up your data modeling and visualization tools like Power BI and Tableau and so on and so forth. So these are the various phases of the lifecycle of data in 
any typical business intelligence data solution where you will identify sources of data, then we'll decide a proper ingestion technology. Then you will transform it appropriately using tools like Bricks, Snaps, Spark Pools, HD Insight clusters, and then you will typically bring it to a serving layer, right? And then the work of data analysts, that is to report modeling and visualization, right? So guys, this was our expert from Team K21 Academy. And if in case you want to have a deeper dive, then we have something really special for you. We have our free class on Azure Data Engineer for data engineer jobs. And if you want to register for the same, then you just have to visit k21academy.com forward slash dp20302. You'll be seeing this kind of interface. Just click on book your free seat now, select an event date, enter your full name, your email address, your phone number and click on yes, save my seat. Moving ahead, you'll be seeing this kind of URL on the extreme right. Save that URL, add it to your calendars and I'll see you in the free class.